Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist and today I was working on this cart model and I got the idea um, it'd be kind of cool if I could animate the wheels, simulate the animation of the wheels of this cart so that if you moved it they would just roll on the ground and that should work even if you rotate the object as opposed to uh, translating it and so I, I set that up using geometry nodes with the simulation loop and so if we play this animation you can see the result here it looks like this works if you go forwards or backwards and I'm pretty happy with that there is a downside to this to be aware of that is that um, it's not actually animating the object you can see the object transform stays the same is rotating the geometry inside of the object using this set position node so if you had a really heavy mesh really high poly mesh this would probably be slow you can see here I can play this back at full 24 frames a second easily um, probably even higher but if you were actually wanting to animate this um, there's a good chance you'd want more control over it in which case you would need to s use this simulation setup to drive an actual rig probably so that you could have more control over the animation of the card itself anyway that being said I think you could adapt this to that it would just require more work you'd have to parent an, em an empty to a vertex or something and then use its motion to drive um, with a constraint or something the rig but it would be possible anyway that being said the way you actually do this to simulate the rolling of the wheel is fairly simple so I thought we would just walk through this little node group and show how it works um, I guess I'll just briefly talk about the setup because it's important so the way it's set up is I have the cart the cart is what's animated and then the wheels follow with it because they're parented to it but they're separate objects and then the wheels are set up so that if you rotate them on their y-axis it could be a different axis but one of the axes should align to the axle so that they spin when you rotate them and then also I have the origin point of the wheel in line with the wheel so we're tracking the velocity of this point and we need that away from the center of the cart so that if we rotate the cart it generates linear velocity at that point as opposed to just rotational angular velocity so then the question is how do we track the velocity over time and so all we're doing is we're taking the current location of the object and we're going to save that to a simulation buffer and then we're going to go to the next frame now the object's here we can get that because that's our current position and then we can pull out of the buffer the previous position which is still back there compare it to derive a velocity vector which we'll use to animate the spinning and then we can save the new current point into that simulation buffer and to be used on the next frame when we can pull that out from here and derive the velocity vector and just continue that chain as far as what we'll then do with that velocity vector we're going to declare a forward direction for the wheel which is, is going to be a unit length vector and then we'll compare the velocity vector to that with a dot product and that will tell us how much of the motion of the velocity was aligned with the wheel basically which will tell us how far along the the wheels rolling uh, direction we moved and then we can take that distance value and convert it into a rotation value using the diameter of the wheel and how far it would roll in one revolution basically so that's enough of an explanation let's actually look at the nodes um, this simulation zone is the main part of it so we need to accumulate the total rotation over time so this value here is our um, this is our rotation and so that just goes straight through it starts at zero it loops back through to itself like this and then we're going to add any new rotation that we've generated from for this frame to it so that's accumulates over time and then once we have that rotation value it just goes into a vector rotate node we're going to rotate the position on the y-axis by that angle and plug that into a set position node that's the whole um, modifying of the geometry that we do however to do that we need to calculate this value here to add to the rotation and um, to do that we need to know the velocity of this point on our wheel the way we calculate the velocity of the point on the wheel is by comparing the location of the object so you see you have this object info node it's connected to self object which is the wheel we're tracking the location so I have the location plugged into the simulation loop so that's its starting value and then 
after that first frame, this value here inside of the simulation loop comes from whatever's plugged into the output over here, which is the location again. So that always looks a little confusing to me, but if the way to think about it is this location value here is the current frame, and this location value here is going to be the frame minus one, so the previous frame. And then if we just subtract those from each other, we get a direction vector from the previous location to the current location, and that is the velocity of the wheel. So now we have the velocity vector for the wheel. We need to transform it into local space because it's currently in world space. Now this confuses me because normally uh, if you do an inverse transformation, you're transforming from local space into world space. Anyway, inverting it is correct, even though in my brain it seems backwards. Transformation matrices are kind of annoying to think about, but it's basically the combined location, rotation, and scale that makes up the object's position in 3D space. And so if you apply that to any point, you move it from world space into local space. If you apply the inverse of it, you move the coordinates from local space into world space. Anyway, inverting it is correct, but it seems to me we're wanting to move from world space into local space, but we have to invert it for it to be right, so that breaks my brain a little bit. Anyway, if we look at this animation here, we can see this is the velocity vector by default, and it doesn't align to the way the card is moving. And then if we plug this transform direction in and restart the animation, you can see now it does match the direction that the card is moving. And so I don't know why it's the opposite of what I think it should be, but um, what we're doing is transforming from one coordinate system, from the world coordinate system to the local coordinate system, that direction vector. Then here in local space, I have, I'm building a direction vector for the wheel. And so that's just going to be positive one or negative one, depending on whether or not you check this reverse checkbox. So you can see the wheel on the opposite side rolls the other way, basically. So that's a, a unit length vector, say they're positive one or negative one on the x-axis. And we're going to do the dot product with our velocity vector to tell us how much the velocity matches that direction vector. And then that works even if the velocity vector is pointing in the opposite direction because it'll just roll the wheel backwards um, if we're moving backwards. Once we have that dot product, which tells us how far along the direction the wheel can roll it moves, um, where you need to transform that into a rotation value. So then if we take the diameter of our wheel and we multiply that by pi, that'll tell us the circumference of the wheel, which is also how far the wheel would move if you rolled it one revolution, which would be 360 degrees. So if we divide one, one meter by that distance, it'll tell us the rate at which the wheel's rotation covers one meter, basically. So then if we multiply our distance traveled by that rate, it'll tell us essentially how many rotations um, we have, what fraction of a rotation we moved over the previous frame. And so then to convert that from revolutions, or 360 degrees, one equals 360 degrees, into radians, um, we just multiply that revolution by 2 pi, which is in radians 360 degrees, and then we add that value to our accumulated rotation over the, you know, the lifespan of this simulation. And then we apply that rotation to the, the wheel, and that's it. So then if we play it back again, you can see it rolls on the ground, doesn't really slide. Obviously, this can't handle spinning, like if this was a car or something that was powered instead of this cart, um, and you were applying power through the wheels, and you apply too much power, and you lose traction, then the wheel spins faster than it's moving. You would have to add a way to like add that in and animate it manually or something. This is only tracking the like perfect rotation on the ground, but I'm pretty happy with it. It makes it really easy to animate something like this, and then the wheels just work no matter um, how you move the object. So anyway, that was just a fun geometry node setup to build, because simulations are always cool, you get to see things moving. A little bit different from what I normally do, but hopefully 
I was able to explain it all clearly. It ended up being a little harder to explain than I anticipated, just with all of the, the moving parts, but um, hopefully it made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I have a Discord server, you're welcome to join. I've made a bunch of stuff. There's info about all of that in the description. Feel free to check it out on my website. But yeah, other than that, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.